Uh, so it has integration of Metasploit for both the export repository and client side attacks and the payloads. Uh, multiple attack vectors specifically designed for social engineering. For good, not bad. Help penetration testers and organizations secure your program. It's, you know, again, use this for your good. Uh, you're going to see a couple of demos here that are specifically related to PowerShell and actually one that's not, but um, that will definitely help you as you're doing penetration tests or you're trying to hack your mom's computer or whatever you guys do in your spare time. Um, it's up to you. Legally. So the USB hit attack vector, really cool. Have you guys seen the Tenzi devices? Adriano Tenzi devices? Did anyone see an Adrian's talk yesterday about this? Did you see Adrian's talk yesterday? Great. Did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job. Well, we've been working with Adrian. Adrian's got some really cool stuff he's doing. Uh, so, what we decided to do was take one of these Tenzi devices and do a PowerShell based payload on it that will compromise the system. Um, so, basically, you insert this you know, USB device into any computer you want to, and it can actually make it multi platform. So it doesn't have to be PowerShell. It can be Linux, OS X, or Windows, or whatever, or uh, the Hannah Montana d Linux distribution. Any of those will work. <laughs> and uh, that's my primary operating system. Um, it's for my wife. I'm just kidding, guys. It's awesome. It is awesome. The music plays in the. Oh, that's great. But uh, basically, when you plug it in, it gets recognized as a keyboard. So that means auto run, all that good stuff is pretty much out the window, right? It emulates exactly what you're going to do from a keyboard perspective. So as soon as you plug it in, I simulate keystrokes. So it does like 140 to 280 characters per second. It's actually more than that, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot more than that. Yeah, sorry. Thanks. Um, and basically, it will execute a payload on the system. Basically, we're only restricted by how fast the buffer is on the program. Did they code that in Perl? Uh, no. They didn't okay. code that in Perl. I was just checking. At least on a Windows system. I was just checking. I mean, you never know. Uh, so you can drop a payload on the system either through PowerShell or WScript are the two main methods. Uh, automatic creation of the attack vector through set. That's, that, that's the big thing. That's why I wanted to show set today. It will actually create the attack vector for you, create the PDE device which you can load into Adreno and then copy it over and you'll see an example of that. And it will compromise the computer for you. So how easy does it get? We're going to load up uh, Backtrack 4, right? Everybody uses Backtrack 4? Yep. yep. Come on. Wow, that's not a lot of people. It's Sunday. I'm not. I'm not. You know. <coughs> the Hannah Montana party was yesterday. So we're going to go ahead and load up set. Uh, you know, again, code name Arnold Palmer. I already got the the, uh, the version of at seven, which is going to be awesome. So pretty funny. Every, I, I try coming up with different ones every time. But what we're going to do is we're going to do number uh, six, which is the Tinsy USB hit attack vector. As soon as you select that, it's going to say what attack vector do you want to use? Do you want to use a purely PowerShell based reverse shell? Do you want to do a WScript HTTP uh, MSF payload? Or do you want to do a PowerShell HTTP GET MSF payload? In this example, I'll use PowerShell second. I want to show you the WScript one because it has more of a presentation experience. Looks better. So it's going to ask if you want to create a payload. I'm going to hit yep, absolutely. Type in my IP address. And then here we get options to use Metasploit. So we're going to hit the default, which is Meterpreter. And then we're going to backdoor the executable. So with an MSF and code and MSF payload, right, you can take a, an, a legitimate executable and shove Meterpreter on the bottom of it so it has better AV detection. What I found was when you're actually executing um, payloads on the client side, if it has a command, if it has any type of command interface to it, it's going to pop up a black window to the user. So obviously you don't want that when you're doing a social engineering attack and it's probably going to be kind of suspicious. Um, well, at least if you're, not, if you're using Hannah Montana OS, it's probably not. But um, basically, what ends up happening, what I ended up doing was I took a version of Calc and I just modified it so it was basically broken. But it, the execution flow within assembly still works perfectly and everything like that, but nothing pops up. So I have that built into set, and what ends up, what ends up happening is when you backdoor the executable, it puts the interpreter stuff on the bottom of it. When the payload executes, the user's not presented with anything at all, which is great. We use the default port 443. And we're going to hey, start up our, our little listener here. Now, if you look, it says uh, was able to extra, um, create the PDE file under report sla uh, slash tinsy.pde. So, what we're going to do is we're going to copy that to our OSX machine. All right. Oops. All right. So we have our Tinsy.pde device here. 
Now there's two things that, to take special note of. There's the Adreno based application which is basically the developer IDE for programming Adreno based devices. So the small microchip, microprocessor type devices, uh, that's what you do all your programming in. On the left hand side this is the Tenzi loader. Uh, so this is what actually uploads your, your bad stuff to this device here. So all we're going to do is just simply drag this over and we have all our code automatically generated for us with our IP address, set, sets up the web server for you, the listener, everything else for you and then you insert your USB device and you upload it. So it programmed, it reboots and we're all set. So now we have our malicious um, USB fuck device. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So we're going to take this and we're on a server 2008 fully patched, all that good stuff, right? We're going to plug it in. Interpreter. So let's just uh, back this up real quick and do the exact same attack vector um, all through uh, PowerShell because it actually is not as cool looking but it's actually a lot more efficient. So if you're going after a system and what's cool about these, if you look and you can see it's kind of hard to tell but there's dip switches on here. Thanks again Adrian. Uh, the dip switches allow you to program different payloads per dip switch that's flipped. So if you want to do, you know, you're coming up to a server 2008 machine, you insert it, you hit dip switch 2, it tar tar you know, targets PowerShell based systems. You hit dip switch 3, it targets OSX. You hit dip switch 4, pops up a, uh, you know, message box saying ha ha, you know, whatever you got, you know. So basically you can program it to do whatever you want to, use any dip switch you want to, have multiple payloads, it's all great. So we'll load up set again. We'll go to the Tinsy USB hit attack factor, the PowerShell. We're going to create a payload. We're going to type in our IP address. We're going to do all the defaults. And it's under reports Tinsy slash PDE. So we're going to go ahead and copy this over again. Easy. Sometimes it doesn't take. So. Hang on one second, sorry about that. All right, so I'm just copying the file back over again. It didn't, uh, it didn't overwrite the other one for some reason. All right, good. We got our PowerShell payload. We're gonna go ahead and upload this cat. This guy. And these PD files are completely customizable. Um, you know, and there's actually um, on the website there's multiple different types of. Uh, Did you press the button? Yeah, one second here. There's actually multiple different types of attacks you can use with this. This is just an example. All right, so it will go ahead and reboot. All right, we're good. So again in PowerShell, my hands are off. <laughs> Actually, I can't type that fa fast anyway. I don't know. You can move pretty fast. And there it goes. That is all you needed. So it actually executed the PowerShell script. Now it's executing our payload. Next, we got Meterpreter.
That was cool. It that worked. was pretty cool. I was impressed. Seen DefCon 16, man. Whew. Glad these demos are working. <laughs> so integrating into existing hardware, Josh, why don't you talk about this a little bit? All right. So um, we did this as a practical joke to one of the guys in the office. Uh, he went away for a week and uh, was getting a new computer, so we wanted to mess with him really good. Uh, what I did was took apart the back of the keyboard, soldered uh, just this little bit of a USB cable to the back of it. Uh, this, uh, it's a Dell keyboard, it's got USB hub built into it, and then plugged a TNC right into it, screwed it all back together. No one could tell any difference about it. So I plugged it into his keyboard, or into his docking station. He came back to work the next day, and um, all of a sudden his mouse started moving on him. Now, I had programmed the Tensi to just move the mouse a little bit and click. So, every 30 seconds. So, it gets better, it gets yeah, much yeah. better. So, 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 okay, so if day one goes by, he's sitting there typing Word documents, constantly messing them up, getting frustrated, it's just, he's having a horrible day. Well, so, and I had to go out of the office. So as this is going, you know, I know what's going on because I'm sitting there cracking yeah, up as he's, as he's start putting this back together. I'm sitting there like laughing my butt off. Yeah, we were, uh, this was a test run to see if we could do this to someone else higher up in the office. Right, so yeah. So we're not doing that. We didn't do that though. Oh, this, we found out this was way this too not, damaging. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not good. So, so anyways, before you get into that, so I leave the office for like three days. So figuring if it got out of hand, they'd probably stop doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so we know he's getting a new computer. So he gets his new computer. He thinks all the problems are going to go away with this. And uh, lo and behold, he keeps the same docking station, same keyboard, same mouse, and boom, the problems start up again. He's like, what, what the hell's going on? This is a Windows 7 box. It should be wor working perfectly. You know, he's you know, doing all sorts of stuff, and he's just getting so frustrated. He's just... So he's like, okay, fine, it's got to be the mouse. Changes out his mouse, comes back, plugs it in, boom, starts up again. He's like, he's frustrated, so it's, okay, so logical troubleshooting, it's got to be the docking station. Changes out the docking station, does it again. He's getting so frustrated that he's, get, he's got a new keyboard on the way. He's also started to put in a request for a new computer. So uh, I, get, I get at the office, and this guy is literally, you know, pulling his hair out, and he's like, I just ordered another computer, I can't figure out, I'm like, all right, wait a minute. <laughs> Thankfully, Dave pulls him into the office before he starts to switch out his uh, keyboard, and uh, I'm able to grab my keyboard that has a Tensi device in it so he doesn't throw that away, because uh, I don't want to lose that. Yeah, thing. so we actually didn't tell him because uh, he was really upset. So, you know, I, I, so I pulled the, hey, man, I got to talk to you about uh, that stuff you're doing over there. Uh, why don't you come into my office for a little bit? And, you know, did the whole swap the keyboard. Um, and, you know, and you're sitting there, and you're like, man, I really only wish it was just like a 10-second conversation, but then it goes on for like 30 minutes. But it worked, and he never knew the difference. So magically, yeah, it started fixing it. Yeah, so magically, it started fixing Wait, it. Wait, these aren't recorded, are they? Yeah. I didn't say any names. Well, I mean, he's going to know exactly what happened when they, you know. <laughs> yeah, that keyboard's sitting on my desk still. Oh, oh crap. Well, you do. well, the funny part about it was one of the other guys uh, that's in the audience right now was listening in, and he knew what was going on. And uh, he had to listen to this other guy who we were playing joke on uh, complain yeah, you know, about it, and he didn't even have the heart to tell him either. So well, you know, I figured, I figured, you know, as this dude's sitting there spending like half his day trying to fix his keyboard and stuff, you know, and, and he goes over to Ryan. He's right there. Actually, why don't you raise your hand, Ryan? You can stand up. Actually, why don't you stand up? Stand up. I, I, I wasn't going to call him out. Stand up. Yeah, right, Ryan. Ryan Elkins. Maybe everyone want to give him a clap. Way to keep the joke going. Way to keep the joke going. So he, uh, you know. The guy comes over and he's like, dude, my computer's so messed up, man. I'm so upset. He's like, can I figure it out? I'm so frustrated. And Ryan's like, dude, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks, have you, man. Have you tried changing out the, key, uh, the mouse yet? Yeah, he's like, dude, the mouse. It's got to be the mouse. <laughs> like, come on, man. It's three days. He's swapping out his, key, his uh, laptop. Oh, well. Hey, so, it's all good and fun, fun and games, right? Yeah, yeah we, uh, Dave told him. Dave told him about a week later. He hasn't talked to me since. <laughs> or me. And I'm his boss. <laughs> Not good. So this is what the keyboard looks like put back together. Does it look like a keyboard to you guys? Yeah. yeah. It's a keyboard. Now, if you were in Iron Geek's talk yesterday, you can also see that you can embed this into pretty much anything you want to. This is just, uh, it's a little bit bigger than you, you might, might see, but uh, the, the chipset is only that big. So, I mean, you can fit it into, like, anything you want to. Yeah, Iron Geek was actually able to fit a hub, a SD card, a Tensi, and all of that into just a normal mouse. And some LEDs, too, to make it look really cool.